Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we'll be showing you a detailed way to paint one of the greatest heroes in Middle-earth, Gandalf the White astride his faithful companion Shadowfax. We've got a comprehensive, easy to replicate way to paint all the variations of white on the model and really bring this epic hero to life on the tabletop. So without further delay, please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. We have a couple of pointers to talk through before the video starts. First off, white is notoriously difficult to paint. It can become clumpy, streaky, unnatural looking if not done properly. To avoid this, we'll be thinning all our paints with Lamy and Medium at an approximate 2 to 1 ratio to give us a better chance at maintaining a smooth, natural finish and blend the hues together nicely. This is our personal preference. You can increase or decrease the amount of Lamy and Medium as much as you like, but we fully recommend thinning down your paints before tackling this model. The same goes for the washes, but we'll be thinning these down at an approximate 4 to 1 ratio so they become more of a glaze than a physical wash in order to avoid any pooling on the model. Secondly, it is much more efficient, albeit more time consuming, to apply the layers and highlights in a few thinner coats as opposed to one thick coat, again to maintain a smooth natural finish. Thirdly, the application of a wraithbone undercoat really helps the white and beige colours we want to replicate, but can make some of the more pigmented colours such as the flesh and skin colours look a bit unnatural. To combat this, again apply a few thinner layers until you've reached the desired effect. Also, we'll point out later in the video that we did unfortunately miss out painting the sleeves on Gandalf's inner robe until we got to the cloak. We thought they were part of the outer cloak. So when painting the inner road, do not forget to cover these areas too so you don't have to mix up the paints again and will avoid potentially having sleeves that might not quite match the rest of the robes. First, we'll start off by base coating Gandalf's face and hands with Bugman's Glow. Try and be as careful as you can during all this and all other non-white cloth stages as any bleeding off these areas might upset the finished look of the cloaks and robes later on. Layer over all the exposed skin with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Once the wash is dry, lay it over again with the previous Bugman and Cadian mix. Focus on separating out the fingers as well as defining the upper areas of Gandalf's face. Apply another layer with pure Cadian Flesh Stone. Now you can start to mark out more of the defined features across his face and define his wrinkles, eyelids, cheekbones and the bridge of his wizardy nose. Now apply a fine highlight with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. Focus now on the more exposed areas of Gandalf's features, pushing the definition further by keeping your highlights tight and neat. 
You can also define his hands more by drawing the paint more towards the knuckle joints and down the backs of his hands to create the tendons beneath the skin. Finally, apply a dot highlight by adding more pallid witch flesh to the mix. Apply this on the upper and outermost areas of Gandalf's face and skin. Areas to focus on are the wrinkled lines, bridge and tip of the nose, uppermost cheekbone areas, eyelids and the knuckles and fingertips. To start off with, we base coated the inner robes, hair and beard with Screaming Skull. Make sure you cover every area of inner cloth here as it can be quite difficult to differentiate what's robe and what's cloak, as we unfortunately did, but we'll point that out a bit later in the video. As we stated earlier in the video, in order to create a smooth and natural finish to Gandalf's robes, it is important that all your paints for the robes and horse are thinned appropriately. This can make your paints more challenging to work with, but by taking your time and controlling your brush, you will achieve spectacular results. It is also important for this model to create subtle differentiation between the inner and outer robes as well as shadow facts to avoid the model just becoming one undefined white blob on the tabletop. Next, layer over the inner robes, hair and beard with a thin down 50-50 mix of Screaming Skull and Pallid Witch Flesh. You may have to apply several thin coats here in order to get an even smooth coverage to better aid the next wash stage and create a smooth finish. Once the wash is dry, carefully relayer over the previous Screaming Skull Pallid Witch Flesh mix onto the inner robes and the hair. Start to focus on the upper folds of material as well as carefully and probably painstakingly separating out strands of individual hair across Gandalf's head and chin. Again, as your paint will be thinner here than usual, take your time to make sure the paint goes only where you want it to go by not overloading your brush and rushing. For the next few highlight stages, continue to add pallid witch flesh to the mix. At every stage, focus more and more on defining the upper and outer folds of the flowing material in order to create a sense of movement, depth and shadow, as well as defining more and more of the individual hairs across Gandalf's hair and beard. You can add this as gradually as you want and apply as many separate highlighting stages to create more of a smooth, blended transition between the darker and lighter folds. We opted for two subsequent layering highlighting stages before the final edge highlight as we felt this gave us an overall optimum look to the robes and hair without overloading the model with too many paint layers.
Finally, once you're happy with the look of Gandalf's robes and hair, you can apply a fine edge highlight of pure pallid witch flesh just to the absolute uppermost areas of material and hair to accentuate the lightest points where the light will be hitting more prevalently. Now we're going to move on to the outer robes and cloak that cascades down around Gandalf. We want to give the cloak more of a pristine white look as opposed to the slight beige look to the inner robes. This just creates a nice degree of contrast across the model and keeps it looking visually interesting when finished. To start the cloak, base coat it with a mix of Ulthran Grey and Screaming Skull. At this point also, we had realised that we'd forgotten the, uh, the arm sleeves of the inner robes. Upon realising these weren't actually part of the cloak, we went back and painted them in the aforementioned method. Even we're not perfect here, hey ho, it happens. Apply a thorough layer, once again thinned down as all your paint should be for this model, by adding approximately 25% Pallid Witch Flesh to the Ulthran Screaming Skull mix. We should also note here that the staff was painted during this stage too, but that was only given one coat with this mix before we got to the final highlighting stages. Once the wash is dry, add more Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix for the next layering stage. This will bring the mix to an approximate 50-50 split Pallid Witch Flesh and the original mixture. Again, as with the inner robes, focus on defining more of the upper and outer folds of material and leaving the Agrax earth shade showing in the deepest recesses. If at any point you get stuck or lost, let the natural flow of the sculpted material be your guide for where to apply this layer. Despite having to paint it white, the sculpt itself is actually very forgiving and helps a lot when it comes to painting. You can continue to add Pallid Witch Flesh in as gradual increments as you wish as we did for the inner robes up to the final highlight stage. When you reach the final highlight stage however, your mixture should be approximately 75% Pallid Witch Flesh and 25% the original Ulthran Grey Screaming Skull mix. Focus this now on the upper and outermost folds of the cloak as well as the tip of the staff where all the intricate woven wood is.
Very carefully pick up Gandalf's belt and straps with dry bark. Make sure you have a good point to your brush here to avoid any possible bleeding out onto the finished robes. Apply an edge highlight over all the belts and straps with Gorthor Brown. Now carefully paint the scabbard as well as Gland Ring's hilt with a mix of Skaven Blight Dinge and Abaddon Black. We're painting the metal areas with this now as the lead belcher will sit more naturally over a dark undercoat than it would the Wraithbone. Paint the hilt of Glamdering as well as the tip of the scabbard and any buckles with lead belcher. Once the targeted wash is dry, apply an edge highlight with Runefang Steel. Now you can edge highlight the scabbard and the handguard of Glamdring with pure Skaven Blight Dinge. Now we're moving on to Shadowfax, Lord of all horses. We're going to be painting Shadowfax in a very similar manner to Gandalf's cloak but with a slightly different wash to create subtle differentiation to that of the brown glaze we gave the cloak. Start off by base coating Shadowfax with pure Ulthran Grey. Again, you'll want to apply this in several thin coats in order to maintain a smooth, even finish. Now, you guessed it, add some Pallid Witch flesh to the Ulthran Grey for the next layer stage. The Pallid Witch will bring the flesh up to a similar hue to that of the cloak, but it won't blend in too much as we didn't add Screaming Skull to the original base mix.
once the wash is dried, we relay the previous mix over the more defined musculature, leaving the null oil in the deepest recesses. We haven't shown this here for the sake of time, but you can clearly see in this stage where the musculature has been defined as a result of the null oil. For the final stage, add more pallid witch flesh to the mix to bring it up to an approximate split of 75% pallid witch flesh and 25% Ulthran Grey. Now you want to further define the horse's definition by applying this as an edge highlight over the most outer areas of skin. Base coat Shadow Factor's mane and tail with Screaming Skull. Apply an all over layer with a mix of Screaming Skull and Pallid Witch Flesh. Once the wash is dry, carefully highlight the individual heads by adding more pallid witch flesh to the mix, leaving the Agrax earth shade showing in the deepest recesses. Carefully pick up the hooves with Abaddon Black. Now paint Shadow Factor's socks and snout with a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Skaven Blight Dinge. Finally, edge highlight all these darker areas with pure Skaven Black Dinge. 
These darker areas just make for a nice feature and spot colour to break up the whites and beiges across the majority of the rest of the model. There you have it, Gandalf the White finished and ready to help lead the three peoples of Middle-earth in their epic fight against Sauron and the forces of darkness.